take it to a whole new level. Word. It's exhilarating and profound. The Black Panther League! Ain't no packing it up. Yeah. Experience the movie event you'll remember forever. Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Ready PG-13 in theaters everywhere now. Returning to the Black Panther set was like Christmas, New Year's, Easter, Thanksgiving, <laughs> birthday, <laughs> all in one. It was a great big gift. Um, great big, wonderful gift. It was some of the most thrilling times I've had in my career. These individuals are stunning in their, in their talent and in their heart, both on the camera and behind the camera, every single person. And it's just waking up with a great big smile and just full of joy every day because you're going to do what you love and you're gonna do it to the best of your ability. And it's all collectively, it's gonna be done with such excellence. Well, this film organically celebrates female empowerment. In the first Black Panther, we established a world where men and women had equitable power and agency. T'Challa was surrounded by influential, powerful, capable, talented women, and talented in a, talented in a number of ways. And so with his passing the opportunity to further the stories of the people around him was just organic uh, that we would be focused on those who were who would be most affected by his death and that would be the women that surrounded him and so what i love about this storyline is that the female empowerment agenda is organic it is in the dna of this story and you we witness a world that does not find that empowerment to be remarkable it is the expectation these women are living in their fullest selves uh they are dealing they're 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 they are uh, thinking more about humanity than about their agenda and how how refreshing that is for the world we live in you know that what you're capable of should not be based on on what gender you ascribe to. Uh, there is something very liberating, and then naturally so, about seeing that in such an effortless way as it is portrayed in uh, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. <laughs> Where is your spear? Should he get me this to try? You know, I like them better. Our foremothers gave us this spear because it is precise, elegant, and deadly. It will not change under my watch. Yes, General. I told you not to bring them. to the Black Panther set, um, it was a bittersweet feeling, of course, because you're re-entering a space that, you know, you you associate so much with, with your brother. And I think in a way, Ryan was really helpful for us to, 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 to give us courage. Um, reconnecting with, with such a profound artist and human being is, um, is, is one of the greatest blessings of my life because he's he's just so kind and so giving, um, so thoughtful, nurturing of our of our many characters and and such a genius as well. So I felt really safe to go back to work with Ryan. I felt really protected and cared for, and I felt really encouraged. He believed in me in a way that sometimes I I, I didn't know if I could believe in myself, he just believed um, that what was required of Shuri was 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 within me and and he brought that out. Who is Namor and what does he represent to Shuri? Namor is one of the oldest characters of the Marvel comic books um, and we are now bringing um, bringing his story to life in, in in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, in our movie, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. He is a king of an underwater civilization called Talukan, 
and he is he's very protective shall we say and what he means to Shuri is a lot of things um he challenges her he makes her think um amongst other things that you would have to have to discover when you watch the film <laughs> Yeah, um, in the film you have um, the, the Nation of Wakanda and the, the Kingdom of Wakanda, I should say, and the Nation of Tala Khan. Um, a lot of similarities. Uh, both are, are, are could be considered hidden kingdoms. Um, uh, they both uh, kind of prospered and thrived uh, with the rest of the world, none the wiser, for a long time. Um, uh, and, and, and I think they both have a, a they both hold on to their to their tradition and their spirituality in a way that uh, is very. Um, it's very intense, you know, um, but, but but it has been beneficial for them. Uh, the differences, I would say, are, um, you know, obviously location. You know, um, that, that's the obvious one, right? That the, the Talakanil can breathe water. Um, so they, they, they form their society in the depths of the ocean. Um, but but also like like location, you know, the Talakanil uh, owe ancestral ties to the homeland of the North American continent, you know, um, Mesoamerica. Um, Yucatan Peninsula, that's where they're from. Uh, whereas the Wakandans are from the continent of Africa. Uh, Wakanda's a fictional place, the Yucatan is not. You know, so that, that's another, you know, major difference. And, and, and I would say that um, the, the biggest, I think, fundamental difference is that the Talakanil have um, uh, a key event in their history that forced them to migrate. Um, Wakandans have never moved. So, so, so that, I think, is a fundamental ideological uh, 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 difference um, that that uh, actually ends up being the one that's the most insurmountable for for for, for them. Uh, I felt overjoyed to be joining the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I come from a family of diehard Marvel fans, of which I am one. So a complete joy, a complete pleasure. Ah, <sighs> in Black Panther. Female representation was always was important as well as it is in Wakanda forever. To T'Challa was very important. He had the wise counsel of his mother. He had the uh, you know the scientific technology of his sister. He had the pro the protection of his of his general. He had the love of his heart um, in Nakia. And now in Wakanda forever. Now that the king is gone, it's incumbent on these women who've always been there to support and to be vocal, have a voice in in this nation, in in the in each other's lives. Um, it's important that we carry on. And the story leans into, into that feminine and every aspect of the feminine, which is the intellect, the physical strength, the beauty, the, the wisdom, the grace. When I read the underwater scenes of this movie, I was just marveled by it. I've never worked underwater. And this was not just like swimming through a pool. This was like full blown worlds with people talking underwater. I mean, I couldn't even imagine how we were gonna shoot that. I know there's all sorts of movie magic, but the way things move underwater is so different from the way things move in, uh, with air. So I couldn't even fathom how we were going to do all that performative work underwater and the skills it would take to to work in water were skills I didn't possess at the beginning of this um, journey. So as I was reading, of course, what you're seeing is all the work you need to do, all the things you don't know now that you're gonna have to know by the time they say action. Uh, uh, and I was very, very fascinated to hear how we would execute it. Uh, yeah. Why? Why are we focused on motherhood? It was really a, a byproduct of of, um, of losing uh, Chad, and, and, and um, by proxy for us, you know, in our in our film um, family losing to Charlie, um, and, and uh, we had to, to reframe the story. And as as we reframed it. It became clear to me that the, the key relationship in the film um, was the relationship between Shuri and her mother, Queen Ramonda, and uh, and that unlocked the the the, the fact that like okay, we, we're probably making a movie that has to do with motherhood now, which is exciting um, due to how much Black Panther dealt with fatherhood 
um and um you know my feature film career I, I made a lot of stories that that dealt with um that dealt with fatherhood and, and um you know Fruitvale uh station was about a young father in 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 in, in Creed um uh, Adonis and Rocky form a, a, a kind of father-son relationship uh, so he becomes like a sorry your father to him a coach um and that's something that we explored in that film so so it was, this was the first time for me to as a as a um as, as a creative to explore that foundational relationship that you know that, that relationship between a mother and their, and their child um child and their mother um and that's something that's like not just like permeates the human community but also like like the animal kingdom you know like like um it's a lot of uh it's a lot of, like universal truths around that around that relationship around that role uh, I often think about um, that there's like a uh, there's like an implied um, uh, sweetness and grace that you think about with, with, with mothers, but also like a, a fierceness and a ferocity. You know, like even in even in nature, like if you're camping out here in California and you come upon like like bear cubs, it's like man, you gotta find the mom or else you know, because you only get in between uh, in between that, because then that 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 mother will tear you apart. You know, um, so so. The, 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 the multiple dynamics of that relationship uh, we thought that was really interesting and it was really rewarding to, to, uh, to make a film about it. What I love about this second installment of our franchise film is it, uh, just that relationship between Shuri and Ramonda. We see, um, we see it as being focused upon a little bit more than the first film. We see ways in which Ramonda is not only queen and ruler and, and trying to settle the hearts of those in the nation that feel unsettled by, by the passing of T'Challa, but we're seeing her also having to deal with her daughter, um, not communicating well and not handling grief well. And in and, and many ways, um, Angela and myself have had to you know, walk through this this journey alongside our characters as kind of like parallel um, emotions that we 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 had to handle, um, and we supported each other by just communicating. You know, being honest about how we were feeling and and pouring all of that love and all of those feelings that 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 we have for our brother um, into into the film and into the characters. Hmm. Seeing the first Black Panther was a complete, full-body, sensory experience. <laughs> it was such a ride. I don't think that we had ever seen that language, that color, that style of storytelling in the MCU before Ryan Coogler and before Wakanda. So Wakanda was definitely it definitely has a special place in my heart, but I think in everyone's heart. So seeing something like that absolutely influences how you move professionally, you know? Wanting to make more conscientious decisions about the projects that you choose to be a part of. I hope audiences by this film will be enriched. They'll leave the theater. They would have had a great time in terms of entertainment. It will be one of the best experiences they've ever had. But also I hope that they'll be able to see themselves. They'll see themselves in some of the relationships that, have, that are on stage, whether it's a relationship with their mother or relationship with, with, with loved ones who've passed on and how to, how to deal with that in relationship with the future and what a potential, that there's always a future and a hope as we see at the very end of this movie that life is continuing and it goes on. And, and those who've passed on are a part of who we are and making up who we are. And so they're always still remain with us. So it's a um, fantastic out of this world entertainment, but they're also a moment where you can reflect. And in both of those worlds, you are enriched in your movie going experience. One thing I love about Nakia is how principled she is. She is someone who shows up for her people, but she stands up for herself. And I love that tension, you know? 
uh, sometimes those things can be at odds with each other. But Nakia somehow is able to do both, uh, be true to herself and also um, show up in the way that she's needed by her community. Um, I, I relate to that, I aspire to that, to be very honest. Um, uh, but I also, another thing I aspire to is her emotional intelligence, uh, which seems very advanced. Uh, she seems to have a spiritual access that is, yeah, is, is goals. <laughs> Riri Williams is a young woman from the south side of Chicago. She is a engineer, a mechanic. She is super confident and in touch with her 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 ambition. She's driven. She's brilliant. And when we meet her, she is at oh <laughs> When we meet her, I'd say she is at the intersection of all those things, all those things sort of coming to a head and showing her uh, sort of the extremes of what all that brilliance and power and drive can do if it's not, if she is not 